What's up, future respiratory therapists? In this video, we're talking about endotracheal tube assessment. You're not going to want to miss this. Let's dive in. All right, so as I said in this video, we're going to be talking about endotracheal tube assessment. Before we do that, do me a favor, go check out the Respiratory Coach Academy. You can find it at www.respiratorycoach.com. I'd appreciate it if you go check that out. What you will find here is several tutorial courses to help you pass your TMC and your CSC exam, as well as many courses designed to aid you in specific courses or maybe areas of weakness that you've identified. So do me a favor, check that out. Uh, and let's jump into this. When we talk about endotracheal tube assessment, abbreviated as ETT, that's endotracheal tube, what we see is that it really all comes down to two questions. Those two questions are, is, is the endotracheal tube in the trachea? And then the second question is, is, once we know it's in the trachea, is the endotracheal tube in the right place within the trachea? So we're going to intubate a patient and what we have to do is ask ourselves these two questions. Failure to assess or answer either one of these two questions following an intubation will potentially lead to negative outcomes for your patient. So let's jump in and break these two questions down. Now, the first question was, is the endotracheal tube in the trachea? What we realize is that during an intubation process, we're going to be taking an artificial airway, an endotracheal tube, and we're going to be inserting it through the patient's, oftentimes the oral cavity, down through uh, the larynx and into the trachea. Now, what happens sometimes is this tube can, can not go into the trachea and accidentally be placed in the esophagus. And so what we see here is, is that the tube should come down and go into the trachea as such. If it comes down the posterior side and ends up in the esophagus, then this is going to lead to a very bad outcome because you're going to have an airway that is designed to help patients ventilate and oxygenate that's not uh, providing ventilation and oxygenation to the lungs, but rather to the stomach. That's not going to have a good outcome. So the question is, is which tools can we use to help us know if we are in the trachea? Now, Egan's does a good job here. Says there's multiple ways that, that, that you can assess this. This is on page 763 or chapter 37 in Egan's. And it lists multiple things like auscultation of the chest and abdomen, um, uh, the uh, light wand, capnometry, colorimetry. Um, uh, bronchoscopy, flexible laryngoscopy, and ultrasound. Now, the one I want to focus on here is the uh, colorimetry because I know we oftentimes use those to help us identify if we are in the trachea or not. Now, the question that gets asked a lot of time is, is like, how do you know if you're in the trachea? And some people might say, well, I'll look at the x-ray. But see, we have to remember something here. The x-ray is a two-dimensional image. And so, from the front to back, the, the, the uh, endotracheal tube may look like it is midline in the trachea, but if we were to be able to look at that from the side, we could see that that is actually in the esophagus, but it would still potentially look like it's in the trachea. So we cannot use chest x-ray to help us in determining if we are in the trachea. Okay, it's key point. X-ray cannot be used to determine tracheal intubation. What we can use is our colorimetry devices that we see here. We have our, our uh, entitled CO2 detectors. You can also use capnography um, to, to, to help you identify this. But what we'll see here is that when we are in the trachea and we are getting CO2 return. Uh, back up through the artificial airway and through this device, it will change colors. Typically starts a purplish color and it will change to a yellowish color in the presence of CO2. Remember, purple is poor, yellow is yay. If you put this in the tracheal tube in the esophagus and you put this device on it, you will not get adequate color change um, on your colorimetry device and that's an indication along with the multitude of other things like the absence of breath sounds with the presence of abdominal sounds. That's, that's going to, to, to all come together and be clues, more data points 
for you to definitively say, we're in the esophagus. We, we are not where we need to be. So you have to be able to pick up on this and know your tools. If somebody says, can you please verify that we're in the trachea? You're not going to call for an x-ray because that's not where we start. We have to use our tools that, 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 that demonstrate to us that we are in the trachea before we are concerning ourselves with exactly where in the trachea we are, okay? So, so question number one, are we in the trachea? Know your tools that can help you uh, identify that. Now, once we are in the trachea, the question now becomes, are we in the appropriate place within the trachea? So, for example, <clears throat> we know that we are in the trachea. Now, our colorimetry device at this point in time is not very helpful in helping us decipher if we are in the correct place. Now, again, fast forward a few pages, chapter 37 in Egan's, page 772. Egan's tells us that proper placement of an endotracheal tube can be confirmed with chest x-ray. There's other ways too, but, but just bear with me for a second. With chest x-ray, the tip of the tube should be approximately three to five centimeters above the carina. Now we know this, it's supposed to be three to five centimeters above the carina. So that puts us somewhere right about here. So this tube should be sitting here. Now, you may say to yourself, well, how come we can't use colorimetry to tell us that? Because with the colorimetry device, we could be right main stemmed and we would still be getting CO2 returns. So that would still show us a positive result. It would still say, hey, you're in the airway because you are. But are you in the right place within the airway, which we know to be approximately three to five centimeters above the carina? On the flip side of that, you could potentially be excessively high in the, in, in, in the, in the trachea. You could be uh, 10 centimeters above the, the, the carina or eight centimeters above the carina. And guess what? You're still in the airway, so you will still get color change on your entitled CO2 detector, but it does not tell us where we are within the airway. This is where chest x-ray becomes extremely valuable to help us identify that yes, indeed, we are in the right position uh, within the trachea. Now remember, you're always gonna confirm in the trachea first and then proper placement after we have confirmed that we are indeed in the trachea. Now, there's a couple of other tools that you can use, but in understanding the, the importance of in the trachea versus the appropriate place within the trachea is super important. And other than uh, uh, bronchoscopy, which Egan's talks about, uh, very few tools will show you or tell you both of these. They were, were unable to answer both of these questions. And so we, we really um, have to understand that, that which tool do we use at which time. Now, with a bronchoscopy, if you use a flexible bronchoscopy to assist with an intubation, then what we know is, is that we can confirm that we are in the trachea because we can visualize the trachea uh, through the bronchoscopy. And then we can utilize the, the bronchoscopy procedure to measure that we are within the right place, three to five centimeters above the carina, okay? So um, keep that in mind when we're, when you're, when you're, when you're uh, anytime you're intubating a patient, uh, anytime you are taking, uh, for your students, you're taking exams about airway positioning versus airway placement, you've got to, got to have a good feel for, for what is the question asking me? Is it asking me if we are in the trachea? Or is it asking me if we are in the right place within the trachea? So, so keep that in mind as you go forward. Sum this up real quick. Know the value and limitations of your tools. Remember, chest x-ray, very valuable in showing the, the, the positioning uh, in regard to the carina, but not able to decipher if you're in the esophagus or the trachea. So, valuable tool, but also has limitations. Your colorimetry device will tell you if you're in the airway. It will show you when you're getting exhaled CO2 returned. But you could be right main stemmed. You could be too high. You could be sitting right at the carina. You don't really know where you are. You just know that, yes, I'm in the airway. So again, valuable tool, but also has limitations. And then always, 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 anytime you're, you're um, 
in or a part of the intubation process, the priority is to confirm and know your tools to confirm that you are in the trachea, that, you, that your airway is in the airway, not in the esophagus, before you start concerning yourself with where is it in regards to the carina. Okay, so um, that's in the tracheal tube assessment. Uh, I'm Respiratory Coach. Stay here with me right here on YouTube. Do me a favor, leave me a comment, hit the like button, and if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Uh, also, come follow me on social medias, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, at Joe Lewis, and then be sure to check out the website, respiratorycoach.com. And remember, at the end of the day, average is easy. Don't be it.